Speaking to you now is Professor Vada Kekong and, and Professor Miso. And today we'll be talking about a multi-drug efflux pump found in E. coli. What is a multi-drug efflux pump, Professor? Well, Michael, efflux pump is a protein that pumps out drugs found inside bacterium into the outside cells so that the bacterium can survive. As depicted by the image in front of you, is the multi-efflux, multi-drug efflux present in E. coli. This works by, by pumping out the drug from within or within the bacterium or in the periplasm between the two membranes and by pumping the protons into the bacterium. Uh, the ACRB is the subunit we will be focusing more on, but it works in conjunction with the TOLSI and the ACRA. The E. coli is a gram-negative uh, bacteria, and this indicates that the that there is two membranes, two biphospholipid layers within the bacteria. Here we see um, the two subunits, TOLC and ACRB. TOLC is in the silver white on top, and the ACRB subunit is in the bottom in yellow. Here we can actually see some of the motifs and structures that are, are taking place in this. As you can see, um, starting from the bottom, we have a uh, the bottom of ACRB, we see a lot of alpha helices. And this is obviously because that's the part that has to span that first phospholipid bilayer. Then we see a number of alpha helices and uh, beta pleated sheets. And then when we get up to the, the toll C, the barrel there, we have a left-handed coil of alpha helices that are quite long, and that's going through the uh, periplasm. And then we see a beta barrel on the very top of the TOLC. This uh, beta barrel is able to span the second phospholipid bilayer and allow the drugs to exit the cell. So obviously, the, the alpha helices is, is one of the dominant uh, structures in this integral membrane protein because it has to span two phospholipid bilayers. Now let's take a, a little bit closer look at the buildup of the ACRB subunit. Here we can see the ACRB as an entire unit with each subunit colored in different colors. First, we'll look at a single subunit. This is a single subunit of an ACRB. This area the is the lower the portion right transmembrane here. section composed of alpha helices. Above it, in these areas, are the monomers that create the central pore of the entire ACRB. Within the monomer is our vestibule parts where the drugs in the periplasmic portion of the bacteria are able to enter and be effluxed. And then in the top portion around here creates the upper headpiece of the entire ACRB, which interlocks with the Tulsi. When you add other uh, ACRB subunits, you can see the portion that the alpha helices that create the central pore between this between these alpha helices. And then we add on a third one, and you can see the central pore is closed right now in this. As you can see on the hydropathy plot, there's an initial spike in the positive range, and then it drops d down below zero, and there's a bit of a back and forth, and this is because it initially starts off at the beginning of this alpha helices in the transmembrane part, and it traces up and down along the protein. And you can see that towards the middle and towards the end, there's a, a larger number of spikes present above zero, and this correlates to the alpha helices present above the transmembrane section and the, and the alpha helices within the transmembrane section. The spikes below zero are indicative of the charged residues located on the subunit that match up with the other subunits to create the inner central pore. One of the facets of the ACRB function is the the energy it, it derives from the 
proton concentration of the periplasmic fluid. So the proton travels through the ACRB to reach the inner area of the bacterium. And in the process of doing this, it travels across these uh, charged residues within the uh, inner, inner sides of the alpha helices. And in the process, it will break uh, it will break the hydrogen bonds found between uh, between these residues, lysine. the lysine and aspartate residues. And in doing so, it will allow a conformational change to be found by pushing the aspartate away and moving towards the lysine. So one more thing to mention about this process is that as the proton travels down the concentration gradient and creates that conformational change in, in the, the subunit, subunit of this homotrimer, that conformational change will actually also cause conformational changes in the other subunits. This is what we know to be cooperativity. And just like in hemoglobin, as one subunit makes a conformational change, the other subunits are able to make different conformational changes. This homotrimer in ACRB, um, they say that it is a, um, a rotating protein pump. It's a rotating protein pump because each of the three subunits will be in separate conformations um, during, the, during the process and will rotate through the, different, the three different phases. Okay, so moving back to our, uh, our overview here, what we, what we just talked about was how the um, protons move down the gradient creating conformational change, but now let's go a little bit more into how a drug such as ampicillin um, can be effluxed out of this cell. Now here what we have is what they call the vestibular port, and this port right here is um, in the periplasmic area of the cell. So let's take a closer look now at the actual structure here. So here we have uh, a, a drug that is binded to the homotrimer here in, in one of the subunits of the ACRB. Okay. Now, right here, what we're seeing is the vestibular port that I was talking about in the, in the graph. Now, I'm going to zoom in. We're going to zoom in on this drug. Now, this, is, this drug is, has a really big name, but it's basically minocycline, which is a common antibiotic. And as we can see, it has specificity here in the vestibular port. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for some uh, hydrogen bonding between, um, we see glutamate, aspartate, phenylalanine, um, and arginine are some of the, the close residues in the vestibular port here. And we know that since this is a multi-drug efflux protein, this protein is able to be specific for multiple kinds of drugs, not, not just this one here. And um, so these different residues and the different um, ports that it has allows it to be able to, to work with many different types of drugs. Um, these um, polar moments here on these polar interactions with the drug and the residues here are really important in, in being able to uh, bind with the drug and, and pull it in. And this phenylalanine 628 is really important to this subunit. It'll cause a conformational change in this subunit and that phenylalanine will actually move and push that minocycline into the inner pore, allowing it to move its way out of the, pro the bacteria. Earlier, the different subunits of the A ACRB. ACRB take different conformations depending on if they're bound or if they're releasing or if they're about to um, accept a new drug into the vestibular port. Now, here the, we have three subunits and they're all in a different conformation. We can start here with the yellow subunit. This yellow subunit actually is unbound and it has a, a 
the crevice, a large crevice in the back, as you can see, um, that is awaiting for a drug, some kind of um, minocycline or some other antibiotic to come in and interact and bind in the active site that we explained a little bit earlier in this video. Once it, the drug um, binds to that active site in that crevice, it is going to shift to the red conformation. Now the red conformation doesn't have as big as a crevice, the crevice is kind of closed a little bit in the back, but um, you can see that that um, drug is in there tight, tightly bounded in that, in that active site. Now once a new drug comes and binds into the old yellow conformation, the red conformation will shift to the green conformation, or the last conformation. Now this conformation, the crevice is closed on the back, but the crevice towards the center of the ACRB is large and open, allowing the antibiotic to leave the active site there and enter into the main pore where it can eventually be efflux. Geez, Professor Joseph, all this talk of efflux pump reminds me of that game you made. That's right, Michael, and as you can see, I've already begun playing it. The ball in this brick breaker game is a drug, and it's attempting to reach the efflux pump on this phospholipid bilayer, and it's bouncing off of these red spheres, which represent concentration solutes present in the cytoplasmic fluid. If the drug is unable to reach the efflux pump, then the bacteria will die. However, if the drug does reach the efflux pump, it will be effluxed, and the bacteria can survive. 